In the center of Moscow, a group of activists is descending on the theater where one of them works. We're going to the theater management for a serious discussion about the dismissal of a person for refusing to participate in this experimental project to inject the population. In Moscow, vaccination is compulsory for 80% of employees in the service sector. But Galina refuses to get jabbed. She normally handles the cloakroom at the theatre, but she and her supporters have been banned from entering by security. The police have turned up. Eventually, Galina has a private meeting with management, but it doesn't help much. They received me and explained the situation. They told me that I had to stay at home. They said they understood that I didn't want to be vaccinated, but they had to comply with the authorities' guidelines. Instead of risking their jobs to avoid vaccination, others have decided to act illegally. Olga works in a bar and bought a fake certificate in order to keep her job. It cost 15,000 rubles, just under 200 euros. I wired the money to a doctor and I got an official appointment for my first dose of vaccine. It's a vaccine that's reserved for you and they really do empty it out. Nobody else gets it. So there you go, I've got my QR code and I'm going to work and out to the restaurant with a light heart. Do a lot of people buy certificates? A lot. A lot of people buy certificates, especially in the service sector. I got a new job not so long ago in a new restaurant. There are 10 of them in the team and they all paid up. This anti-vax movement is hard to define in terms of figures, but online there are many voices that claim to speak for them. In this Moscow apartment, anti-vaxxers are recording a new show for their YouTube channel. This is our studio. We regularly do broadcasts on all current issues. Today we're talking about QR codes and vaccination. Hello, you're now watching the People's Solidarity Channel. Today we're talking to Professor Alpidovskaya, a doctor in economics. The speakers include leading academics discussing rumors about the COVID vaccines. These are not vaccines, but an attempt to modify human DNA. And it will turn people into transgenic human beings. But for Sergei, who has over 60,000 subscribers on YouTube, the central problem is the lack of trust that Russians have in the state. The lack of trust is largely due to the fact that for 30 years, the government has made people's lives worse. I come from the provinces and I can see the state of the hospitals in the regions. The state mustn't try to gain trust just when it wants to inject the individual, but well in advance. People are angry, angry at the health system, at the reduction of hospitals, at the number of beds dropping by half. And you're telling us that with all this, people supposedly love Putin? In some places, this lack of trust means denying basic facts. Concerned mothers and fathers have gathered here in Moscow for a packed meeting held by a parents' association. Are any of you victims of pilot schools? Tell us what happens there. Issues like distance learning, PCR tests in schools and possible vaccinations for pupils all come under fire. Nobody's wearing a mask. Out of precaution, we decided not to stay organizing an interview for another time. Our movement was formed in response to distance learning being forced on students and their parents, because during this terrible year, children's eyesight and health have deteriorated, while everyone can see that COVID does not have the same terrible effects on people as terrible diseases like cholera or plague. There are no corpses in the streets. But they are filling the morgues. In Russia, over a thousand people have been dying from COVID almost every day. When asked to comment on the failure of its vaccination campaign, the Moscow City Health Department did not respond to our requests for an interview.